Thank you, Madam Speaker. I rise today in support of this bill, which would require insurance companies to finally cover oral chemo. For the past 19 years, this bill has been introduced in one chamber or the other. For 19 years, cancer patients have continued to suffer in pain because this legislative body has yet to vote yes. So I can go over the statistics how 43 states have already passed this with increases in premiums at near nothing. Pennies on the dollar. I can talk about how medical advancements and cancer treatment have allowed all of us to live longer lives in quality and dignity. But this argument has failed. So I'm here today to tell my story. June 9th, 2015, I was diagnosed with a very aggressive kind of breast cancer. I was 31 years old. I had just left my union at my job, and I say this because I moved into management. So I was no longer eligible for short-term disability, only long-term. But in order to qualify for long-term disability, you had to be without, you had to be without pay and couldn't work for over 80 days. As a single individual, that wasn't an option. Leaving Wayne State wasn't an option for fear of losing my health insurance. At 31 years old, my life was thrust into chaos. For the first time in my life, I had to think about things that I never thought I would. Like being a woman and fertility. I was lucky and was able to put off chemotherapy by one month in order to go through egg harvesting to hopefully have the option of having children in the future. I went through a very aggressive double mastectomy, which was the easiest part of my journey. I started IV chemo in September of 2015. In order to receive IV chemo, you have to take a day off of work for infusions. They last anywhere from four to eight hours. And that's just the infusion. Because of my aggressive tre treatment, I had to go in the next day, missing more work, to get a new LASTA shot to help with my immunity. The next day, the next week, you have to go in for a blood draw once a week. Now this may not seem like a lot to all of you. Sorry, Madam Speaker, this may not seem like a lot. Many young people don't have a port. You cannot lift things with a port. You can't lift things, anything over 10 pounds. So because my breast cancer was in my right side, during the double mastectomy, they have to take out your lymph nodes to see if it, the cancer is spread. So because of that, I can't have anything done in this arm, ever. So everything had to be done in this arm. I was in IV chemo for well over a year. The infusions got tough, but the blood draws were even tougher. When you're in the hospital for three weeks at a time, every few days they have to remove your IV and put it somewhere else. Once again, I only had one arm to do this. So to save my arms, I would get blood draws in my neck, in my upper thigh, my foot. We were unsuccessful through the toes, but we even had to do that. IV chemo is horrible. I would go to work so sick because I couldn't take off any more days because you only have so much for FMLA. So I worked and my poor colleagues had to pick up all of my work. Wayne State was without an admissions officer days at a time. So when we talk about pennies on the dollar, we don't talk about the loss in business that people like me cause 
when we have to fight for our lives. I am so grateful that for these past year, for these past few years, I have been able to be on an oral chemo. When you go through breast cancer, everything is taken away from you that you feel as a woman. Your hair, your eyelashes, your eyebrows, your toenails, your fingernails, your breasts, your fertility. I am so grateful for oral chemo because I get to be here today. I get to make a difference in the lives of Michiganders. I get to see all of my wonderful colleagues just being here to make a difference. And this bill right here makes such a difference. This bill right here allows people to go through cancer with dignity, to be able to work, to be with their family. Whether you believe in a higher power or not, at some point, if you are diagnosed with cancer, you're going to ask yourself why. Why me? And I ask myself this question all the time. Why me? Why did I have to ruin my life to go through this? Two years ago, I testified on this bill in insurance. And I remember being on the elevator, leaving committee, and two gentlemen from the other side of the aisle came up to me and said, they said, your testimony changed my vote. And then I realized what my why was. I needed a story to be able to tell each and every one in this room so that after 19 years, this bill can finally pass. So colleagues, I beg of you, please think about cancer patients. This isn't about money. This is about pennies on the dollar, if that. So please, colleagues, I urge a yes vote for oral chemo parity.